something that MIT program really taught me about was kind of go like partners is assessments, which I use all the time. They taught different kinds of formal assessment, informal assessment. Um, you know, taking notes on kids can be so helpful. And then also having really meaningful objectives, which um, I think about every time I plan for the week. Thoughtful, meaningful, why am I choosing this? Why does it matter? Mm -hmm. What's my end goal? Where are we, you know, where am I going? Where do I want the kids to be? And then also, you know, about what Sis was saying, where does it fit into the Ehlers and the GLEs and our report card up in North Shore? Okay. So you know, know, everything that we're looking at as a staff, I was already trained to do um, mm -hmm. in, in the Master of the Teaching program, and those are things that I do in my classroom. And I see, I've seen that um, uh, from being observed by the principal um, when he gave me back a, you know, he did a briefing. He observed me for about five minutes one time <laughs> and wrote it all up. And he was like, okay, best practices. And we, as a district and, and a staff, we have a chart that says this is what best practices look like. And he just kind of listed everything that I had going on in my classroom. And it, sort of hit every, every box, so. One thing that I could really appreciate about the MIT program is how they taught us and how with the evergreen philosophy of being interdisciplinary, but how they taught our lessons on how to be teachers, they presented it in so many different ways where we could do plays, we could write, we could write a song, and it made it very engaging that that taught us how to teach our students to make sure that they're engaged in the lessons while we're meeting all these other state goals. I definitely learned a lot. We had that literacy strain when I was in elementary, and um, I had on my list here the workshop model that was introduced in that strand was really helpful because that's what my district was using, and um, I feel like I was I, I slid right into my district's plan really easily, and all of the best practice and the the new kind of form about what the workshop is and all of the different components of readers and writers workshop and then now they're talking math workshop, it really helped me to um, kind of solidify that. I can piggyback on that with a real life example. Um, when I started teaching at uh, Bethel Junior, I was teaching Com Arts um, and I was given two sections of reading, just general reading for all students. Uh, in the following year, we were implementing a tier program to help students who were unable to pass the WASL and who were at lower reading levels to kind of target them. Um, and I was asked to teach that. However, I was not certified as a reading specialist or in reading. And so um, there was a little bit of a panic button that went off because I was teaching in something that I really wasn't certified in. However, um, I took the praxis and was able to become highly qualified in reading as a reading specialist because I got so much literacy in this program and so much reading um, instruction mm -hmm. in the program that I had to do very little studying to pass the process. Mm -hmm. I literally found out I needed to take it. I took it the following week and I found out on Tuesday, I took it on Saturday, and I passed with a very high score. And um, I directly correlate that to how much reading instruction we got just on the fundamentals of um, how reading is going to work, so. One of the things that uh, I have appreciated probably on a daily basis mm -hmm. has been the challenging of bias and I mm -hmm. find that as a human being and as a teacher my own personal biases really can be a barrier in my teaching both in the curriculum that I create the lessons and the interaction with students and their families and it's not very often that I have had anybody intentionally challenge my biases and had to really reflect and examine my own sense of value and sense of place and personal culture. And I make a lot of assumptions about my students and I really have to step back. And um, in order to be effective, I really need to be honest with myself. and. Um, and, and that was so intentional, and I really admire and appreciate that. I feel like our school has, um, also in Tacoma School District, with the standards-based classroom movement, has put the Euler project. Now the kids are basically doing the Euler project. And I think that it's been, uh, the impact is so tremendous because um, the student body that I work with, 
with being 80% through lunch and a lot of other impacts um, in terms of their my population, their um, amount of trust in society or in the school system is very low. But having them understand the standards, like just posting it, because that's what some people go, oh, write it up, sure, yeah, got it. Right. That has no meaning whatsoever. Right, but that's we, the magic fix. Well, right, that. just writing on the board has right. nothing. But when the kids can actually say, um, excuse me, yesterday you said the meeting standard on this would be if we had three supporting details. Now you're saying it's got to be author's use of literary devices for those three right. supporting details. Mm -hmm. What is it? And so when the kids can talk to me at that level about the GLEs, wow. mm -hmm. then they're confident that they can anticipate how I'm going to assess their work. Kids don't have a self-esteem problem. They don't trust America. Yeah. They don't trust the school. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the standards-based classroom, I see huge impact on student learning. They're correcting me. They're calling, we called the OSPI and corrected them. And they had to go and say, oh yeah, actually there is a discrepancy. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it taught me how to be a professional. And I, it gave me those habits, those professional habits, like reading um, books about literacy and reading, um, you know, the, the different magazines and the journals that are published and, and talking to other people about what you're reading and kind of having professional conversations with other teachers. Not in passing, not, oh, you know, are you having an apple theme or a pumpkin theme, but really getting in there <laughs> about what we're doing, why we're doing it, how does it connect. And that is something that I'm so appreciative to is that I feel like a professional. I, I'm not just a, you know, silly kindergarten teacher. I do my job, I do it well, and I try my best every day. And that is something that um, Master of Teaching helped me to develop.